Hey guys, what's up? It's 2Bit here, and we are here to discuss another Star Wars topic. And with me today is Ginger Hello. and Zach. Hello. Donovan. Ahoy, hoy. <laughs> uh, Zach and Donovan, have you guys seen Rogue One's trailer yet? And if you have, give us your opinions. Zach, you go first. <clears throat> Well, I'm I'm sure you're all familiar with my opinion on the new st- on the uh, newest Star Wars movie and how much I was rather. What's the uh, best way to put this? Unhappy you put it with your it. favorite movie. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, not that at all. Well, unlike that, I actually the the Rogue One trailer actually looks really really good to me. I think it's a uh, very very interesting. So Why is that? hopefully. Well, I mean, like, what, like what, what appealed to, what appealed to you more than the original like the episode seven what what made it like look better to you well i've always i've always rather liked things that uh take place in the star wars universe between the fall of the republic and episode four you know during that little 20 ish year time period there where the Empire is just mm-hmm. in full control and the rebellion starting up. I've always rather liked any storylines taking place around that, and this seems to do that. And <laughs> Plus, you know, it looks like, you know, hopefully we'll get some Vader action, and I'm a big Darth Vader fan, so if there is a lot of pandering in this, it'll at least be the right kind of pandering that I can enjoy. So you think that Darth Vader is going to be in this? I can only hope. I mean, maybe not as in a major role, but considering so it's almost the time like period... A new hope. Sorry, Almost <laughs> joke online. <laughs> Go on. You know, it, it looks it looks to be pretty good. It doesn't look quite as a cliche and ripping off the original trilogy episode as four. yeah, <clears throat> or episode seven did. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It, it, it looks to have some rather original aspects to it, and so I'm actually looking forward to it. Which is a good thing. I actually won't mind spending my money going to see it this time. <clears throat> Alright, so I want to point out a few things about this. Is I think, theory time, I think all the main characters, or at least the people that we're following, are all bounty hunters. Uh, you got the, uh, remember that robot? I, I'm going to look like a complete shitty nerd here. Remember that robot bounty hunter? That's standing next to Boba Fett and all the other bounty yeah, hunters IG-88. when Darth Vader's talk to him. Yeah, IG-88. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. There we go, Sean. So there's a scene where robot's running. It's like a brief second right behind uh, a couple of the other people. That looks like him to me. Mm. Uh, these other characters uh, uh, almost have like bounty hunter-esque or at least, you know, uh, just... Uh, you know, rogue style outfits on. They're not wearing any garbs that represent the Imperial Army or, you know, anything like that, uh, except for that one scene where she's wearing what appears to be one of the, uh, um, you know, uh, TIE fighter she's wearing uniform. uniforms. But yeah. that could Which obviously be an infiltration. Into... Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I think she's infiltrating the, the base. Which then comes to question if these are bounty hunters. Which, fingers crossed here, because that would be pretty badass, because don't forget they're coming out with a Boba Fett movie later on. Uh, is that going to put Boba Fett in there and start circling around so that they connect the characters? I can only <laughs> hope that it does mean that, because I would really like to see Boba Fett do something in a movie other than suck and die. <laughs> so wait a minute. I'll follow the ship. So- I'll transport this prisoner. I'll die. If, <laughs> yeah. if your theory is correct, are you saying that this group of if. people who are going to plausibly probably go find out what it is the Empire's working on and then go into the Death Star to steal the plans, are you saying that they're going to be some kind of suicide squad? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> kind of weird, right? Yeah. Of people that they hire to send in there because they're kind of rebellious and against the norm. Yeah, I, I think that exactly. Uh, and, and and then and here's another thing: is there, I'm hearing that, or a lot of people are saying that they don't see any Jedi's in this. So that means there's not going to be Jedi's. 
I don't think so. I think there's going to be Force-sensitive people, maybe not Jedis, but I think there's going to be Force-sensitive people. For example, one of the characters appears to be blind, which means that maybe he has a Force-sensitive ability, such as uh, Anakin did when he was pod-racing or something like that. Well, I think that would be a terrible mistake. This is a golden opportunity to shine the light on normal people without <clears throat> having to do the Force or go through that bullcrap philo- space philosophy. Dark forces. I do want to have science fantasy. Any, any force in it? Oh, you're absolutely right, and I think I think you're absolutely right on that, Sean. I would be happy with either scenario. The scenario I'm saying is that it shows that you, any individual, is able to, if they can, hone and train their abilities to become force force sensitive and to become Jedi's just like the original trilogy kind of did nope, before nope, 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 nope. That's Metachlorians impossible. came in there. The fo- yes, Metachlorians. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Before Metachlorians fucked up the universe, that's what I'm saying is the original trilogy uh, set it up as if, hey, maybe I can sit here and move this Coke can because I'm an idiot and I'm 12 years old. You know, that's what every you know kid watched that movie liked is like, hey, I could be you know force force sensitive. And then Metachlorians came in there, destroyed all that. Maybe this is trying to ease their way back into that, in a way. And that Point, would probably be okay with. Young George Lucas, while writing the story, is like, anyone can do this, and let's let's do it. And then you fast forward to the prequels, it's like, no one's going to take my spot. I rule the world. <laughs> so. It's it's almost like money corrupted him. It's almost you know. like any everyone and anyone is special and rich as long as they have heart. And as he got older, no, no, only I am rich <laughs> and I only have heart. <laughs> well, anyway, I mean, we can... As he bathes in his money. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you really enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to keep up with everything we're doing, hit the subscription button on the video. And if you want to see more 2-bit podcast videos, hit the video on the right. Or if you want to see some 2-bit reviews, hit that video on the left. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.